Well, welcome to this edition of Money in Motion video blog. This is Dan Perkins. And today I want to talk about quantitative easing. Is it going to be reduced, tapered, eliminated, or accelerated? Uh, there's been a great deal of discussion about whether the Fed is going to start to um, taper its quantitative easing. That's the purchase of mortgages about $85 billion a month sometime in September. When the Fed announced that they were possibly considering that, we saw an incredible increase in yields in the 10-year and the 30-year Treasury. At the peak of the cycle, the yield on the 30-year Treasury reached 392 about two weeks ago. Right now, the yield on the 30-year Treasury stands at 372, or down 20 basis points from where it's high. Other signs are pointing to the possibility that the Fed is in fact not going to stop <clears throat> their quantitative easing and may in fact have to accelerate their purchases. There are three keys that I want you to watch for over the next few weeks. That's the yield on the 30-year and the 10-year Treasury bond. That's number one. Number two, the price of gold. And three, the price of crude oil per barrel. Crude oil and oil have been moving up as interest rates on the long end of the yield curve have begun to fall. I think that the commodity markets are telling us that they don't believe that the Fed is going to stop or taper their quantitative easing. Uh, we had a report yesterday that new home sales were down 13% as a result of the increase in mortgage interest rates because of the run-up in the 10-year bond. Uh, this is starting to back off a little bit. Whether or not it will recover or take us to a new low, uh, I don't think so at this particular time. But I still believe what I said uh, many months ago, that I think that we are in a trend line that uh, holds the yield on the 30-year below 410, 425, and on the 30-year, excuse me, 410 to 425. And it's very possible that next year we'll see an uptick in jobless claims and on un the unemployment rate, which would keep the Fed in the market of buying and then trying to drive interest rates uh, lower. I believe that it's possible that sometime in 2014, probably towards the end of the year, we may see actually close to 1% on the yield on the 10-year Treasury. So the keys of watching are gold, oil, and the yield on the 10 and 30-year Treasury. Now how does that bode well or does it bode well for the stock market? As we were approaching the 4% yield at 392, given the yield on the S&P 500, some investors began to look uh, with favor towards the long end of the Treasury curve because their yield was almost twice that as the yield of the S&P 500. Uh, we have seen significant volatility, uh, sig a very significant volatility in the stock market. And as we talked before, we had a situation a week or so ago where we had a series of days where interest rates were rising at the same time the equity markets were falling. As of this morning's opening, uh, it's around uh, 10 o'clock now, Eastern Time, uh, the S&P 500 is off a little more than 5% from its high. That's where it was the last time it went down. So is this a dip to buy or is this the beginning of a significant correction? Um, I think it may be a dip, but I don't know that it's necessarily a buy. I would suspect that when, uh, when Congress gets back to work and we start thinking about uh, debt ceilings and whether we're going to have um, a more uh, a government shutdown or not, how we're going to deal with the funding of Obamacare, all these things are going to weigh on the markets and uncertainty is going to continue. Probably the biggest uncertainty for me is what our government's going to do in Syria. I, I read this morning in the Newark Star-Ledger that the strike that they're talking about doing against Syria is a punitive strike. They're going to try and punish the Syrian government and ultimately the Syrian people for the fact that they may have used chemical weapons against their people and killed hundreds if not thousands. Uh, what do we do after that punitive strike? Do we want to change regime? 
the administration, our administration in Washington says no, they don't want to change regimes. So the Middle East is a mess and it's a very, very unstable and you've got a lot of fanatics in that area. The uh, Iranians uh, have already said, and the Syrians, should the United States or coalition forces attack Syria, uh, these Middle Eastern countries will attack Israel in, in response. Uh, Israel, of course, is going to protect its borders and its people, and it will respond. So I, I don't know where it's going. It doesn't seem to be a strategy, just, well, we've got to do something because the president drew the line in the sand. Well, maybe the president shouldn't have drawn the line in the sand in the first place. Um, I'm very concerned about, uh, as the markets begin to focus on what's happening, especially if there are strikes, that we break through the 5% down, and uh, we could see uh, maybe as much as 10%. Uh, I am concerned that, uh, that the market, market may seem somewhat vulnerable at these levels, and that uh, I would look for a deeper correction coming sometime in October of this year. So I wish I had prettier news, but I really don't, um, at least as I see it. Uh, right now, uh, I think that we're in a very difficult time, both politically and economically in this country. And I'm not a believer that the Fed is going to slow down its purchases. If anything, they're going to continue purchasing well into 2014. And if I'm right that we're going to see an increase in unemployment, I suspect the Fed will try, in fact, to increase its quantitative easing. Um, right now, the federal deficit is approximately $17 trillion. And the Federal Reserve, through its purchases, has about $3.5 billion, trillion dollars on its balance sheet. Um, it could very well be, very quickly, that the U.S. government replaces uh, China as the largest holder of U.S. government debt. So lots of things to study and watch. Hope, ho hope you have a good rest of the summer, a safe Memorial Day weekend, and uh, thanks for water watching. And if you have questions or you have people who are looking for help, please feel free to give them my number. Thanks.